So you want to be a successful Gunpla YouTuber just like me, let me tell you all of my secrets and how to do it. Hey what's going on guys? So I get asked this question every now and then of people who want to start their own YouTube channel and they ask me some advice on just how they should go about starting their channel, what they should do uh, to make their channel grow. And so I'm making this video for two reasons. Number one, when people ask me that question, I can just link them this video instead of having to explain it every time. And but even aside from that, this is just a video that I've wanted to make for a long time. So I figure it's finally time to just go ahead and make this video. And I just want to first start off by saying that being successful on YouTube can mean different things to a lot of people. I would only consider myself like very moderately, slightly successful on YouTube, enough that I've been able to make it into what I do for my day job, which is great, and all thanks to USA Gundam Store, so big thank you to them for making that possible. But I'm by no means professing myself to be some know-all guru about how to do this. I mean, if you guys are really super interested in the subject, you can look up pretty much any video that you could find on YouTube talking about how to be successful on YouTube is probably gonna say most of the same things that I'm gonna say in this video, but let's go down and get to my list here that I've got. I've basically broken it down to the five P's because I like to do that when I make these kind of videos, get some sort of like abbreviations or something going on. So there's five different things, five P words that we're gonna use. And the first one is uh, production wow. quality. This is kind of where it all starts from because of course if you're on YouTube, you're making videos. So production quality is what you need to start off. You need uh, good video, good lighting, good sound. Those are the main things. You also need some good editing. And this also, I would include just the, the actual content, what you're saying in the video, the information, is are you delivering it in an entertaining way? This is also comes down to the editing as well. As far as the technical things of like your computer, your microphone, your lights, you don't need to spend a ton of money on these kind of things to have good entertaining videos that people enjoy watching. You could just use your phone and you know, if you have just decent enough lighting, you could probably make videos and if it's entertaining enough, people will watch it. So that's the thing. You don't necessarily need to get hung up on, you have a really good idea, but you don't have the right tools to make it. Just try to make whatever you can with the tools that you have and you'll try to make it your best. Obviously, if you have like really crappy sound quality or just really terrible lighting, no one's gonna really wanna watch this. So it has to be good enough. And this is the kind of thing I talk about every time we do a contest. When you're photographing a kit, if you don't have good lights, just go outside. You could do the same thing for just making videos. Take your kit outside, you know, set up some kind of just simple background with just the natural outdoor lighting and that can work just good enough. Again, working with these limitations can actually drive you to be more creative and you might actually find more success because you had to find new and creative ways to do things that maybe everyone else on the platform wasn't doing. So production quality is super important, but that's just like the baseline of it. And like I said, making interesting content, you also need to consider about like making unique content. If you're just making the exact same type videos as 15, 20 other channels are making, then there's not really gonna be much that makes your, your content stand out, your channel stand out. You need to do something uh, thrown in there to make it more unique that people will find it and people will want to watch your videos for one particular reason aside from watching other people's videos or watch it in addition to watching other people's videos. If it's the same, people don't wanna watch the same video twice necessarily. The second P word we're gonna talk about is patience. You have to have a lot of patience. If you guys have ever tried starting a YouTube channel, you know that it just takes a while to get going at first. And I think that's probably the case with most channels. If you know, you're know you super lucky, uh, your, video, your, your channel can take off and you'll do super amazing right from the start. But in our particular genre, I just don't think that's gonna happen. Gunpla is a very niche hobby. There's just not that many fans. I don't think there's ever gonna be a Gumpla YouTube, like a specifically dedicated Gumpla YouTube channel that's getting like millions of subscribers because there's just not that many people interested in the hobby, unfortunately. But you know, it's, you're gonna be getting like one, two, five subscribers a day for like the first eight, 10 months, something like that. My channel was like that, it was super slow growth for like the first eight months or so. And it only wasn't until I started doing something different that no other channels were doing really at the time. I started making the Gumpla News videos and I did my traveling videos to Japan and those couple of videos. Now a couple other channels were doing like something similar, but those, that time when I started doing some other kind of different things is when I really started to see some more success with my channel. And so it just takes patience. And I think you could also substitute patience for persistence on this one because you also just have to stick with it. You have to just keep being persistent. 
uh, you're gonna keep making videos and keep getting a little bit of views, a little bit of views. You're very slowly growing your subscribers, but you just have to stick with it. You have to be persistent. And I'll kind of come back to this in some later points because it's kind of related to some other things that we'll talk about in this video. And this also goes back to what you want out of your YouTube channel, what success means for you with your YouTube channel. If your goal, if what a success on YouTube means to you is just that you have, you know, your own loyal fan base that you like to share your work with and that's enough for you, that's all you really want out of it, then that will be easier to achieve, obviously, than if you want to get, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, if that's your goal, if you want to get like sponsors and you want it to turn it into your, your, like your living, that's going to take a little bit more time. Of course, you have to work your way up to that. Aside from just patience with your channel's growth, you also just have to be patient with people. Uh, you're going to have a lot of people criticizing you. I mean, it's, it's YouTube, it's the internet, people criticize you. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You want criticism, especially in the early days of your channel. You really want to take that into consideration because that's going to allow you to realize, you know, what you're doing wrong, what people like, what people don't like. And then way you can kind of steer your content based on uh, what you think people are responding to better or not. And then aside from just like comments on your videos and stuff like that, people will message you and it's important to be patient with people. I get messages and questions all the time and I always try to give people the time, you know, to answer questions anytime anyone uh, sends me a question or something in a private message. I always try to take the time to answer everyone and so you just have to be patient with people as well just in just kind of normal life I guess and if part of your goal is like getting sponsors or turning it into your job or whatever especially with sponsors you have to be patient with that as well too you can't just start your YouTube channel and get you know you reach like that 500 subscriber goal and you think that's a big goal and it is when you're first like getting started five when you hit like 500 subscribers 1,000 subscribers it seems like a lot when you're just getting started off and it is uh, but you have to remember that like when sponsors are wanting to work with content creators, you ideally want to work with a sponsor who, you know, has a genuine interest in cultivating the hobby. That's why I personally really enjoy working with Adam at USA Gundam Store because I know uh, he actually has a good passion and is genuinely interested in supporting me and supporting everyone in the hobby. And so, yes, a lot of times, you know, hopefully these businesses are run by people who do just want to genuinely help people in the hobby. But at the same time, they're in the business to, you know, make money, right? That's part of their business is just they want their business to succeed as well. So it's hard for them to invest by giving kits or giving money or whatever. Most of the time it's just giving kits, right? Uh, but that's what they're getting their profit from. So giving that away to people for promotion is good, but they need to see something back from that. So if you're making a video to, you know, only just like a couple hundred people, how many of those people are then actually going to go to that store and, you know, buy something from that store? It's going to be whatever small percent of that. So is it really going to be worth it for that sponsor to work with you until your channel gets up to, you know, a little bit more uh, success in terms of like the number of views, number of subscribers or something like that. So if you're really wanting to get to sponsored by some companies or something like that, try to get some tools or kits or paints or whatever it is. If you're, you know, just getting started off and you're reaching out to sponsors and asking if they're interested in working together with you and you're not getting the response that you want, basically they're saying no, don't get discouraged. And more than likely the case is just that your channel is just not big enough yet for where they feel like it's worth it for them to do that. You know, just again, just keep being, pers just keep being patient, keep being persistent, stick with it. And you know, as you're getting bigger, you'll find it's much easier to get sponsors and partner with different companies and get tools and paints and things like that, that companies will be willing to send you to try out to promote their products. And that actually kind of ties nicely into our third P, which is promotion. So obviously uh, with what we were just talking about, promotion is you're promoting the stuff. But what I mean is that you need to promote your videos to your audience. So if you just make your videos on YouTube and then you post it on YouTube and then you don't do anything else with it, uh, you know, people are going to have a hard time actually finding you. You have to then put the videos where people are, where the people are so that people will see it. So obviously the main thing will be Facebook. Uh, you can promote your videos on YouTube, on uh, Instagram or Twitter as well. Although I just don't think that those are maybe quite as good as Facebook. Facebook will allow you to just, you know, drop the link to your video directly in some groups where you know a lot of people are and you know a lot of people are interested in Gunpla share your videos there and then that way you know that at least some people will see the video and then another thing with that is just how you title the videos how you tag the videos uh, how you design your thumbnail this also kind of goes back a little bit to the production quality because kind of a part of the production would be titling the video creating your thumbnails things like that but you need to create 
interesting titles, interesting thumbnails, or at least in, like in my case, I just try to be kind of straight to the point with it, but you can get a little bit more creative. Uh, and of course that makes it more enticing for people to then click on your videos if you've got a cool looking thumbnail or just an interesting title to the video. And you can look up on YouTube like ways to do that, ways to make interesting titles and interesting uh, thumbnails that people will want to click on. There's I'm sure a million videos on YouTube about how to do that. So you know you want to make your video look interesting before people actually even uh, click on the video and watch it. And then you have to put it in places where people are going to want to click on it. So it can also be Reddit. I don't actually use Reddit, but I know some people do. So that could be another place. Reddit, Facebook, you know, Instagram. You just like post the thumbnail, whatever, and then like put a link or something. But it's a little bit more difficult to do that on Instagram. That's a pretty easy and straightforward point. With that, we can move on to the fourth point here, which is price. Now, this is also referring to a number of different things. First of all, the price of just the kits that you're buying. I know there's some channels out there who like the main thing that they're trying to do is be the first to review kits. And obviously that's the reason for that is if you're a review, if you're a reviewer and if your review is out first, more than likely it's gonna get more people watching it because people are really excited for the new kit coming out and they wanna see the review straight away. So if your review is one of the first ones out there, you're naturally gonna get uh, more views from that. So that makes sense, I understand that point. But if that's like your main thing, you're gonna be wanting to buy every single new kit as soon as it comes out and be like the first one to, to review it. So just the price of what you're spending on kits, especially like if you're a review channel, if that's what you wanna do. Uh, buying all the kits, buying new tools to review, buying new equipment, buying new cameras. I know other people who spend a lot of money on just constantly trying to upgrade their equipment, uh, getting new lights, getting new cameras, getting new tools and gadgets and things for their uh, recording and production and things like that. So these prices, you know, just think responsibly, <laughs> you know, if you can really can afford it or not. If you're then like not able to pay your bills because you're spending all your money and definitely, Investment is necessary. I will say that, you know, people say you have to spend money to make money. And I, from my experience, I would say I do think that is definitely true. Uh, but, you know, you have to spend, you know, what you're able to spend while still being able to have a roof over your head and have food on your plate and things like that. So just, you know, remember to be responsible about it. It's very easy to go out and think that I'm going to buy a bunch of kits and make a bunch of reviews and buy a bunch of new tools and things like that. And I'm going to do all this, but just be careful with uh, that's the monetary price side of it. But there's of course, just another side of this price of uh, just being a YouTuber is like uh, physical stress, emotional stress, uh, stress on your relationships. These are all important things that you have to consider as well too. YouTube is basically like a full time. It's like a 24 hour job is what I mean. Uh, because if you're doing it as your job, if you're doing it as a hobby, then that's kind of a different thing. But I can tell you just from my experience, now that I do it as a full-time job, uh, it's great that you can work, you know, when you want to work, you don't have to punch in, you don't on a, a schedule where you, I have to work from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, even though that's basically what I do. But it's great that you can work in your own schedule, but at the same time, that means that you're kind of always working, you're always thinking about working. So for me, it doesn't bother me, but that can be, really stressful and especially if you have relationships uh if you're even if you're still living at home with your parents they might not like you're up late at night you know making videos talking loudly into your camera making noise or if you're in a relationship with your girlfriend boyfriend husband wife whatever if you have young kids or even older kids whatever you, you know you have to take your family relationships your family responsibilities uh into consideration and then just like i said the physical emotional stress. Physical stress is basically just kind of, at least in my case, uh, the biggest thing for me has just been like loss of sleep. Uh, a lot of my, you know, whatever amount of success I do have here on my channel, a lot of that just came down to the fact that I just didn't sleep very much and I still don't. It's still kind of my thing. I started my channel basically a year before I got married and then had my first, had my son a little bit after that. So right at the time when my channel was like just starting to kind of take off, was the time when I was married and had a new baby. And then in the meantime, a couple years later, then I had a second baby. So, you know, when you have a wife, new wife, and when you have kids or just whatever your family relationship might be, you know, I had to separate out my time. I didn't want to sacrifice family time for, you know, Gumpla time, YouTube time. So I had to separate that. I do my family time. And then when they're asleep or out, you know, my kids are now at school, that's when I work. Or when they're asleep, that's when I work. So. I had to work at night, you know, doing a lot of work. And it, just the thing with it, it always feels weird to call it work because it's like my hobby, but it is work at the same time. So anyway, 
This is not necessarily a very physical hobby. You know, you're basically just sitting down most of the time, but you know, you do need to live and you need to be healthy. So, you know, get enough sleep. For me, it's been enough, but definitely not as much probably as it should have been. Uh, you know, I've, I'm okay, but probably I should get into the habit of sleeping better. As for the emotional stress, definitely. And this is the kind of thing where it comes down to your patience. If you know, you're, you're put, you feel like you're putting a lot into your videos, you're putting a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money into buying kits and buying equipment and you're just feeling like it's just not happening for you that's going to be stressful and that's going to stress you out that can demotivate you and that can also make you lose your passion for the hobby which is really unfortunate which you just would hate to see someone who you know really is super passionate about gunpla and they really want to make a gunpla channel that's going to be really successful and just is not working out for them and then that kind of ruins their passion for gunpla in general and that's unfortunate and I just wouldn't like to see that in anyone I've seen it happen before and just that's why I want to warn you guys about that don't let uh, any negative emotions and that can also come from like criticism whatever haters online and this kind of thing you can get stressed out because of that really easily don't let these negative things ruin you know what your original passion was which is just making gumpla models and that is the last thing that I want to talk about and the most important thing I think personally is just the last P it would be passion you have to just have passion you have to just enjoy what you're doing and that's what i think has been the main thing people ask me a lot of times how do you keep from getting burnt out because i just uh, constantly building constantly making videos um and honestly i think that the i just don't have a really good answer for that but i guess the only answer that i could really give that i think would be the, the most important thing is just passion i just enjoy doing it i just really enjoy building i really enjoy the video production side and that could be the thing too Say like you really enjoy building models, but then like the actual editing and recording, you just find really frustrating and not enjoyable. If that's the case, you know, you're gonna have a hard time keeping up making videos if there's like one half of the whole process that you just really don't enjoy doing. Uh, but for me, I enjoy all of the process. So that's what's kind of been able to keep me going, but you just have to have passion and your want for success, whether it be you want success in terms of followers, you want success in terms of like sponsors or money or whatever, that's not passion i think that's motivation that's different that's what motivates you to do it that's what drives you to want to do it because you want to achieve your success of you know getting 20,000 50,000 100,000 subscribers you want to get sponsors that's what motivates you to do it but that's not passion that's not what's going to make you enjoy doing it passion is what makes you enjoy doing it i think that's really important for people to see in the audience when you as an audience member watching someone on youtube um, when you're watching someone who's passionate about what they're making or not, you can see that and I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, you can see when people are making videos if they're really interested, if they're really passionate in what they're making or if they're just making what they're making just to kind of, to, to, in an attempt to make money or an attempt to get subscribers or, or whatever. So the thing is that everyone's passion is different. Like for me, like I said, I enjoy what I'm doing and I can do it every single day, day in and day out. But that might not be for you. Maybe you do have a lot of passion for making videos, you have a lot of passion for making Gumpla, but you don't have a passion to do that every day, and that's fine. And so I think everyone's passion is different. You have to take that into consideration as well. You, your passion for Gumpla may not be the, the kind where you're able to do it every single day, so you shouldn't feel like you have to do it every day. Of course, like with the way that YouTube works, you have to be persistent, like I mentioned before. You have to kind of regularly upload. If you upload like one video, one week and then it's like two weeks you upload a video and then a month later you upload a video and then two days later you upload a video if it's super inconsistent like that like the youtube algorithm just doesn't like that but if that's where your passion is that you enjoy making videos just like when you get suddenly inspired by something uh, you suddenly feel that inspiration there's this video you really want to make and you make it at that time i think that will be for the better rather than trying to fill the empty gaps of time with just something that you're not really that interested in just make what you're interested in, make what you're passionate about. And I think, you know, you may not fulfill YouTube's algorithm uh, wants and needs, but you'll be, you'll be fulfilling your audience's wants and needs by your audience seeing you as the creator making something that you're really passionate about. I think that's much more enjoyable for people in the audience than to see you just kind of going through the motions on something. At the end of the day, despite everything that I've talked about in this video, you have to be willing to accept failure. And I feel bad to say it like that. I don't want to say it like that. So that's kind of like failure for lack of a better word. But then again, there's some like really smart guys who will say like, uh, 
you know, failure is good. You should like accept failure because failure means you learn something. And so, yeah, there's that. But then also I don't want to say failure because I feel like especially if you're not trying to make it your job or even if you are making YouTube videos should be a hobby, at least at first. So if it's a hobby, you can't really fail at a hobby. So that's why I feel like it's kind of the wrong word. So failing at a hobby is not really something that kind of those two words don't really feel like they go together. If you were dead set on making it your job and it wasn't successful, then I guess that would be a failure. But if you're just enjoying doing it as a hobby and that's all it really should be, especially at the start, then, you know, it may just not work out and it's not worth, you know, sacrificing too much of your time, too much of your money, too much of your, your passion, your love for the hobby. Uh, just to try to you know do whatever it is you're trying to do trying to reach some certain amount of fame online or number of subscribers or things like that at the end of the day that's really not what it should be about and that wasn't what it was about for me and it's a, i shouldn't say it like that now it sounds like that is what it's about for me for me now at this point i actually check my youtube analytics probably less than i ever have before i think just because i'm just comfortable with where i'm at now i'm not super interested in like really trying to make sure how am i going to grow my channel like that and i never really was and that's probably i guess uh what i talked about with passion i was just enjoying what i was doing and then like naturally you, your channel just grows but i've told this story many times but when i first started my channel i didn't even think i was ever even gonna get a sponsor, let alone make it a job, let alone, you know, I've been now worked with a number of different sponsors and different companies promoting different tools and paints and kits and all that sort of stuff. I never expected that at all. I just expected to, you know, make some videos here and there and I just kind of fell in love with it and it all worked out for me, but it might not for you. And just for whatever reason, it can just be just luck really basically is what it comes down to. For me, I was really lucky. When I started my channel, it was right at the time, you know, a couple of really big YouTubers at the time basically quit right at the same time when I started. So it was really good timing for me to kind of fill that void. Uh, Henry Vegeta8259 had recently quit. Uh, Robert184 had recently quit. And so it was a perfect time for someone to come in who didn't have any numbers in their YouTube name. I'm just joking about that. But there was a void to be filled and I think my content did it. Uh, Good enough job to fill that and so that uh, helped me a lot now there's not that much of a void actually i think now we have a surplus we have basically oversaturation i think so i think now it's, it's kind of going to be a hard time and that's where the uniqueness of your content is going to come into play because there's kind of an oversaturation now especially like for review videos and things like that if that's what you want to get into there's already you know 10 15 20 good review channels out there that you know do good enough work that it's going to be really hard to crack into that audience if that's what you want to do you got to do something different i think but i think that's probably enough for this video guys but of course uh, as always if you have any other questions about this or any other topic you know you guys can feel free to uh send me a message anytime i still get people sending me messages sometimes and then they're, they're like super surprised that i reply back like I'm very open to uh, messages and questions from you guys. If you just want to shout out and just say, hey, what's up? Or if you have a question about something, you can get in touch with me anytime. Facebook or Instagram is probably the best way to do that. But you know, especially about this particular topic. And if you have questions, let me know. Like I said, I'm no expert in it. I've you know been moderately successful here with my channel, but there's definitely a lot, still a lot of places where I know that I could improve. Like for example, I think on the whole quality versus quantity thing, going back to like production value and stuff, I focus a lot more on quantity and that's just because there's so much that I want to do. I think I could definitely improve my production quality a lot if that's what I wanted to do. Honestly, I think my production quality is good enough, but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement with that. If I you know, would invest the time and effort into doing that, improving my production quality, just speaking on my channel personally, it's just hard to do that for me personally, just because there's so much that I want to do. I want to make book reviews, I want to do my Mecha Musume reviews, I want to make my just other Gunpla, diff other different robot Mecha reviews, and then also do actually customizing kits, painting kits, and all this stuff. And there's only so many hours in the day. So for how much that I want to do, it's hard to cut back on the quantity. 
uh, because if I did that, I would, there, there's even less that I could do. And right now, even I'm just barely able to do a portion of what I would love to do. So, and so anyway, I'll, I'll wrap it up guys. But uh, if you have any other suggestions for me, what you would like to see me do here on my channel, some other ideas you guys might have or thoughts, critiques, feedback on my videos here on my channel, anything, I'm always open to that guys. So leave uh, whatever opinions you might have down in the comment section below. Thank you, thank you, thank you, as always, uh, for just all of you for just hanging out, for watching my content, liking the videos, commenting, subscribing. I really just appreciate you guys just hanging out, being here. I uh, hope that you enjoy the content. And of course, thank you to us at Gundam Store for making it all possible, as I've mentioned a couple of times now, but I will just mention one more time because definitely I would not be able to do this as my full-time job uh, without USA Gundam Store. So I just wanted to end by saying that if you guys are wanting to start a YouTube channel of your own or you already have, I wish you all success. And if there's anything that I can do to help you guys, definitely reach out to me when people uh, message me to say, hey, I've got a channel and I would like to interview. You know, I have like a, my own personal policy. Like if anyone ever asks like to interview me or something, I always say yes. So if there's anything I can do to help you guys, you know, of course, uh, reach out to me and I'll always be willing to, you know, try to help as much as I can for any of you guys. Uh, so with that, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.